Welcome to this introduction to the new Omegon Pro Astro Camera Vlox 178C. We'll do a quick unboxing and then I'll show you how to get the camera set up on a Mac. On the side of the box, you can see the model identifier and the production date, in our case May 25th, 2020. Almost all astrophotography gear runs exclusively on Windows. Mac users tend to be at a distinct disadvantage. But this camera is not only ASCOM, but also INVI compatible, and that's what we'll use to get it running on Mac. It runs natively on PHD, Windows and Mac, and the Nina Suite, Windows only. Next to a list of what's inside, the third side of the box shows all the variants of the Omegon Pro cameras. Now let's take a look inside. Protected by a foam padding, you'll find this fitted insert containing the ST4 cable for when you want to use the camera as an auto guider, a USB cable with gold plated plugs to connect the camera to your computer, a set of extension and adapter rings with one and a quarter inch thread, and of course the camera itself. It's very compact, just 71 millimeters long and 41 millimeters in diameter, weighing in at 90 grams. The bronze anodized aluminum has a premium touch. On the back, you'll find the ports for the guiding and USB cables. On the front, a protective cover hiding the 6.4 megapixel color sensor with 3096 by 2080 pixels at a pitch of 2.4 microns. While a lot of documentation on using Astro cameras with Windows exists, not much can be found for the Mac world. The 10% market share of Mac OS is significant enough to warrant a look at the possibilities for this operating system. The friendly folks at Astro Shop, where I got the Omegon camera, recommended I take a closer look at KSTARS. It's a free, open-source cross-platform astronomy software that not only provides an accurate graphical simulation of the night sky from any location on Earth, but also contains a plethora of amazing tools for observing and photographing the sky. One of these is the Eco Suite, a complete astrophotography solution that can control all indie devices, including telescopes, CCDs, DSLRs, focusers, filters, and more. Many Macs exclusively offer USB-C ports, so we'll need an adapter to USB-A, the most common and recognized USB plug. With the camera cable in the adapter, the small USB-C plug goes into the laptop and the USB-B end into the camera. I'm working with an 80mm f6 TMB refractor with an apochromatic LOMO lens on an Ioptron CEM25 EC mount. Take off the dust cover just before inserting the camera into the one and a quarter inch eyepiece tube. With the hardware ready, let's head down to the software. Launch KSTARS and the Ecos Viewer. Create a profile for your gear by clicking on the plus icon. Assign a name, leave the auto connect check mark, and make sure the mode is set to local as the camera is connected directly to the computer. Ecos requires a mount and camera in every profile, so if you're just looking to control a camera, select Telescope Simulator from the drop down menu under Others. Don't worry if you can't find the Omegon camera in the list of CCDs. Choose the Tube Cam driver, then save your profile. It's best to take your equipment for a daylight test drive. Without the difficulty of centering and focusing a faint target in the dark, you can get used to the hardened software with sufficient light before moving on to the challenges presented by night photography. Set up the telescope to point at a terrestrial object that you will use to get comfortable with the workflow you'll need after night falls. You might need a combination of adapters and or extension tubes to reach focus. Make a note of what you used and how far extended the focuser tube was to get into the ballpark when doing this with fainter targets at night. In KSTARS, open the Ecos Suite, then click the play icon to start it. A few new tabs will appear and a new window opens, the Indie Control Panel. Next to a tab for the telescope simulator, you will find one for the camera. In the Ecos window, clicking on the camera icon will show you a bunch of capture settings. The Indie Control Panel has a whole lot more, not all of which are adjustable. From my current experience, it's not really intuitive and often unclear whether I should be changing the settings in Indie or in Ecos. 
On my first try at imaging Jupiter, I had a strong green cast because I couldn't find out how to adjust the white balance. On my 12-inch screen, the sliders were simply out of sight. It might help to resize the window while you make adjustments, but this can be a bit tricky once you've also got the live view window open. Start looping images with this icon. When you make adjustments like exposure and gain, you may need to stop and restart the looping for them to take effect. Now you can focus your image. Notice this is a lot of fiddly work, so make sure you're confident you can do this in the dark. Then it's time to wait for the weather to clear and the stars and planets to come out. Lunar and planetary photography is easiest with a stable and well-aligned motorized mount. With my Ioptron CEM25EC, Polar aligned in less than 5 minutes using the integrated Polar Scope and the PS Align iPhone app, targets stay dead center longer than I need to focus and take all the subframes I want. So far I've figured out two ways to record data that I can use to make a final image of the Moon or a planet. The first is telling the software to take a series of individual FITS files. When you've determined the correct exposure and gain by playing around with the numbers, make sure your target is focused and enter the number of frames you want in the field next to count. Add the task to the sequence queue with the plus icon. When you're ready to go, press the play icon and let the software work. When you're imaging a planet, most times it will take up just a small part of the field of view. You can select only a part of the full frame to increase the readout speed and capture more frames per unit of time. Use the looping function in the KSTARS FITS viewer and activate crosshairs and pixel guidelines to help you. It's an iterative process, so don't be frustrated if it takes a few tries to get it right. My preferred method of image capture is to record a video in the SER format. To do this, open the live video window via the camera icon with the red dot. You can see that Jupiter now has a blue cast. Let's adjust the color temperature and tint in the Indie control panel. The middle icon opens a dialog that lets you choose how many frames to record. I want to capture as many frames as possible in 120 seconds. Now click the record icon and let the software do the work. No matter which recording method you choose, you'll need to process your raw frames into something you can show your friends and the internet. From the hundreds or thousands of frames, we use lucky imaging to align and stack only those with good seeing. Again, software makes it possible analyzing, sorting, and processing our image in mere seconds. My program of choice on the Mac is the free AutoStackert. Made only for Windows, it runs very stably on Mac using the Windows runtime environment Wine. When recording single FITS files, I still have several problems. First, ECOS shows a sufficiently bright preview when using significantly shorter exposure times, but the images are too dark in AutoStackert. Second, I cannot get a color image from FITS. Despite all settings being identical, the result is always grayscale. And third, I can get a much higher number of frames per unit of time with video. This is relevant for high resolution imaging of the planets where rotation can be seen after just minutes. For these reasons, I currently only record SER files. I'll show you the auto stackered workflow for these now. After opening the file, use the settings as shown. For a planet, we'll let the program align the frames with the center of gravity function. Click Analyze and you'll soon see a graph showing the quality distribution of the frames. There will be a few excellent frames from those fleeting moments of near-perfect seeing, a lot of average, and a few really bad ones. Since we only have 800 frames, let's let the program stack the best 25%. With thousands of frames, you can use a smaller selection. Leave the other settings as shown. In the video window, tell the program what to align on by selecting Manual Draw for a Planet, then framing it as shown. Now hit Stack. Depending on your video's frame size, the number of frames and your processing speed, all of these functions might take a few seconds to a few minutes. I don't let AutoStacker do any sharpening. All of my post-processing is performed in Photoshop. Just to give you an idea of what's possible, I'll quickly show you what I do. I resize the image to 400%, then apply selective sharpening. Be careful not to overdo it, or what you think are details will really be image artifacts. Look at the cloud structures that are revealed by this step, and try doing this with a single frame. 
the main point of stacking is to increase the signal to noise ratio dramatically, allowing you to perform strong image sharpening. Next, I apply a series of color and contrast correction, but this is mainly a matter of personal taste. I won't claim to be good at planetary imaging. The purpose of this demonstration is to show what can be achieved in the first night with an affordable planetary camera and a small telescope using a Mac. I'm pretty happy with my first results. My special thanks go to Astroshop for providing the camera for this test. It was conducted without payment and contains only my personal opinion and experience. If you're looking for high quality astro gear at a competitive price, check out astroshop.eu.